Hello, hello, hello. Morning, everybody. You bright and shiny souls here who made it in, into church this morning. We thank you for your effort to be here and bless each and every one of you. I'm going to get. We're going to get started now. If you're a first-time visitor, and uh, there's a connect card, and for you to fill out in on the foyer on the table, and put it in the back of the seat or in the offering plate or the blue box by the office door. Communion will be up front today only. Up front, okay? Today only. Offering plate is lo is uh, located up front by the communion plate, and. Uh, you may feel free to give if your heart so desires. You're not under any obligation from this church to give. It's a Christian church. Our desire is to delight, to delight God by being empowered to be kind, just, and righteous. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer. Gracious Lord in heaven, we thank you for this most wonderful day. Thank you for the moisture that we sorely is needed here in this county and throughout this part of the state. Thank you, and I pray for everybody that is traveling today or will be traveling tomorrow, particularly our youth group. You'll be with them, and, and Isaac, as he drives up back up to Gillette with, with the kids, guide and direct them, and just be with them, O oh Lord, as they, as they travel. Thank you again for the moisture this day. Blessed be the those who do work around the church and, and the first responders, dear Lord, and thank you for that. Just now go with us through this prayer. Be with us. Guide and direct our hearts. May be opened. Listen to Dave as he brings the, the message from his heart, dear Lord, and, and uh, we pray for safe travels as, as he returns home at his convenience. In Christ's name I pray, amen. All right, so, go sit down, Don. Let's have all of you over here move over to here. We have a few enough people, and since you guys are all the young group, you guys sit over here, all right? Can I sit over here? I don't have to move over. Yeah, no, you got to move over. Let's sit over here. I, I, I will. All right, so um, one of the things that, let me, there, is that better? Pardon me? Okay, so um, happy Sunday. <laughs> Isn't it interesting that um, we have such a beautiful weather outside <laughs> so yeah um uh, just so you all know i know a lot of churches closed i get it but we had dave come up and and the message he's prepared i want us to hear and so um we're going to actually beam it out live um on our uh uh what do you call that youtube and uh, so that people can have it and then uh, uh, we'll just fellowship and have a good time and sing together a little bit and all that kind of good stuff as we get going. We're going to go a little bit out of character or out of order, I guess, here. What are some things that are praiseworthy today that you have had that just, just this week, good things that have happened this week? Yes. All right, you and somebody got to spend more time together. Okay, you got to spend more time together. Good deal, good deal. Um, somebody else raised their hand. I, did, I saw a hand go, uh, yeah, Yvette. Yes, I was, I was told that I whine too much because I can't see. So uh, um, now I... Uh, Yeah, <laughs> what Mike is alluding to is I brought home um, biscuits and gravy because I didn't get a chance to really eat 
at the, at the thing, so I brought home biscuits and gravy. So one morning I flopped out my bread and I grabbed the little tub of biscuits and gravy and I put it on the bread and Yvette looked at me and she says, you know that's mashed potatoes, right? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's how well I could see. So, uh, so yeah. Um, but yes, I have my eyes back. Um, the, the, the one eye is still healing and may take a year or so to heal, um, but at least I can see a little bit and that was, that was good. And we were able to get glasses, which was really cool, too. They, they cut them for me, which is the first time. My eyes have always been so bad. This is the first time they were able to cut glasses at the shop, not have to go send them off for four weeks. So this was kind of cool. Other praises, other good things that have happened. Um, Mike and Casey are so blessed to have Joyce and Dave stay with them an extra day. So uh, that, is a, that is a praise. So, <laughs> what else? What other good things have happened? Yes, Julie. I'm thankful for the moisture. The moisture, yes. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. And Walter, you were telling me it's supposed to snow potentially up to three feet in the bighorns. So we can sure use that. We can sure use that. And if you haven't guessed, if you haven't been out there and shoveled it, Try it for a little while, because it's heavy. A lot of moisture content. All right, other things. Yeah. Yeah. And they are, just so you all know, they are going to be staying um, overnight uh, just because of the weather and things. And we just, uh, the Gearing Central Church, praise God, they're going to try to find host families and or let them stay at the church. So that'll be neat. To, we, got, we got them covered. We got them taken care of. You now know as much as I know. So it snowed. That's all I know. Yeah. So if y'all want to send a, a, a text to Bob and, and tell him, you know, I hope you're enjoying the weather. Go ahead and do that. Uh, <laughs> Because it's, it's really nice down in Texas right now. All right. Anything else? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's neat to see y'all. I, uh, I was kind of wondering how many we would have. So this is back to when we first came to church. <laughs> All right. Anything else? How about prayer items? Things to be praying about. I would ask that you would continue to pray for my sister. Um, she is getting better, uh, moved to a recovery unit, but she still is not out of the woods yet. And then uh, please be praying for, uh, for the situation in Hugoton with uh, the Kelly family. Um, be praying that Veronica and uh, Jillian will be returned um, one way or the other. So be praying for them. Okay? Yes. Which one is this? Megan, okay. I, I thought so, but I wanted to make sure. All right, so be praying for Megan Mondel. Okay, good. All right, be praying for Pam. Speaking of mouth sores, be praying for Pam. Um, she's just not feeling good. And so we need to be remembering Pam Yates. Okay, other items to pray about? Yeah, Don. Okay. Okay, so we got some illnesses floating around, so we need to be praying for that as well. Yeah, with Marty. Okay, anything else? So I'm going to do things, something I'd like to do a little bit different. Um, I'd like to, to just open it up. We're going to have a prayer time. And uh, I know that the, the, the YouTube will not pick this up, but I'm going to ask that if you would pray just from where you're at, just pray. Just ask God to be with something or praise God for something. I don't care if you're a man or a woman. Just bring it out and let's just talk to God for a little while um, right now. So let's, uh, let's just go to God in prayer.
Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you for allowing us to just serve you. Thank you for giving yourself so that we could have a relationship with you. Lord, uh, sometimes hearts can be heavy with the things that happen in our world, and we ask that you would grant us a, a measure of peace. Help us focus on the comfort and the joy that you can provide. Help us be obedient to you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. One of my very favorite saw for the little. One of my very favorite verses is uh, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit is dryness to the bones. So with all the moisture, we can't get dried out. And with the fact that I'm playing, it's going to be a cheerful heart. All right. So uh, let's uh, let's just sing together, and I'll let you guys pick a couple songs as well if you want. And if I do this, oh man, I, Isaac used this last, so let me take up a little bit here. Nah. There we go. Let's see if that works. Yeah, close enough. All right, here we go. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 That's pretty easy to sing, right? I want to hear it. Okay, Fina, I want to hear it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 If you want joy, you must sing for it. If you want joy, you must sing for it. If you want joy, you must sing for it. The joy of the Lord is my strength. All right, ready? Happy are those who are hungry and thirsty for goodness, for they will be fully satisfied. Happy are those who are hungry and thirsty for goodness, for they will be fully satisfied. Satisfied. Satisfied, for they will be fully satisfied. Matthew 5, 6, oh yeah. Mike, I didn't see the oh yeah part. <laughs> uh, huh? All right, any favorites? Choruses. Favorites? Yes. Okay. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Let's do the chorus again, I like that one. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Another favorite? As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. 
You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship Thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone will my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. I love you more than any other, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone will my spirit yield. You alone are the desire and I long to worship you. Somebody else? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun I love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you oh my soul rejoice take joy my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. Let's do that one again. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. To worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear. Yes. All right, we'll try it. Humble thyself in the eyes of the Lord. Humble thyself in the eyes of the Lord. And he will live. Higher and higher, and he will lift you up. Okay, now women, it's really easy. You just get to echo the guys. 
Abraham gave his son to the Lord. Abraham gave his son to the Lord. And he was lifted up higher and higher, and he was lifted up. Jesus became a man for me. Jesus became a man for me. And he was lifted up higher and higher, and he was lifted up, up into heaven, and he was lifted up. So humble thyself in the eyes of the Lord. Humble thyself in the eyes of the Lord. And he will lift you up, up, higher and higher, and he will lift you up. All right. Anything else? Any others? All right. Some glad morning when this life is o'er, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days and then I'll fly away. To a home where joy shall never end, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away in the morning when I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. All right. Not too soon, though. You have to stick around here for a while before you fly away. Right? All right. Uh, no, but you heard Tim Loveless as well. All right. Okay. Anything else? All right. So before we uh, have Dave come, and, and, and basically you guys all know Dave already. You know Dave and Joyce, and, and uh, something that, that Dave and I had the had the joy of going to college together. Um, actually, uh, I graduated with Dave, Yvette and I did, uh, and uh, we've known them for many years. Dave and I have gone to Mexico together on missions trips. Uh, we've gone to church camp together. Um, Dave actually is our song leader at our men's retreat. And I, and I have to tell you, one of the reasons that I have Dave always do our song leading is because Joyce is a great cook and I want her to come up. But on the second reason is because, quite frankly, um, hearing Dave's heart, uh, hearing Dave's heart when he sings, uh, when he, he, he lifts the guys up, and, uh, and hearing them respond when he sings um, and when he leads us. And, uh, and, and that you, you just, it, that's, you can't put a price on that. And so that is so valuable for our men's retreat is just having that. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited to hear Dave. Dave's very uh, smart, well, a lot smarter than me. 
and uh, has a lot to uh, offer in, in this topic. Um, I've asked him to talk about the difference between mercy and uh, uh, grace and, and how do we define that difference. Uh, because So it, it may be more of a teaching time than a preaching time, and that's okay too, uh, but uh, I do want him to do that. But before we do that, I just want to... I just want to sing a little song with us together. And uh, <clears throat> the, it's Psalm 139. It's, it's just an easy little chorus. But lately, it's just been on my heart of, about how um, we don't often recognize how, how special we are because of God because of the God who created us. In and of themselves, we're not, we're, we're, we're nothing. But because of the God who created us, and especially with some of the events that are occurring, and, and uh, I, I've just been thinking about how, how special we are, and how this life is not promised to us for very long, but because of Jesus, we have eternity. So, so we're just going to sing Psalm 139, and, and uh, then I'm going to have you, we'll pray, and they have you come on up. So, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy words. Marvelous are thy works, and I know it knows it well. My soul, it knows it well. Let's start on it one more time together. I know it may be new for some of you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. Marvelous are thy works. And my soul, it knows it well. My soul, it knows it well. Lord, we want to thank you so much for knowing that we were created in your image. That we were created with a purpose. And that, that while we are on this world, while we're on this planet, that our purpose is to have relationship with you. And that someday our physical form is going to be gone. But that our, our eternal purpose will be there for eternity. Thank you, God. Thank you. As we open our Bibles today, Lord, and as we get to studying, Lord, uh, speak to us. Speak through Dave. Let your word be proclaimed. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I get started, if I could have uh, the kids come down real quick. We'll find out how many kids when I turn around because you know. you're the only children? Just the two of you? Well, this would be easy then. All right, I just wanted to make sure that we, we got off. Good. Here you go. Would you like a piece of chocolate? Is that okay? All right. And you, young lady, would Are you okay? You're checking out her candy? This is her candy bar. You, why are you checking it out? So Espresso bean. Do you want an espresso? Wait, here, let's get you something bigger. Shall we get you something bigger? Oh. Yeah, but you ruined the whole illustration. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. <laughs> You know why they did that? 
Because we have it. Thank you. Oh, you, I'll talk about you, not to you, though. Go ahead, have a seat. You know why they did that? Because we have an intrinsic understanding of fairness. If you don't think that we have an intrinsic understanding of fairness, you can even ask your dogs. Have three treats. Give two of them to one dog. The other dog will let you know that you are not being fair or just. But life is not fair. I used to tell my kids, fair is what comes in the fall. You go there and you get to ride stuff. And my son would say, what? We can go to the fair? <laughs> so thank you kids for helping me out with my sermon. Would you do me another favor and help me out one more time? Just ask me how I am. Better than I deserve. If you ever listen to Dave Ramsey on the radio or watch him on TV or anything, you'll know that when somebody asks him how he is, that is his standard answer. Better than I deserve. And I have picked that up a little bit when people ask me how I am. I often say better than I deserve. When we get arguments, other people understand that I'm absolutely right. Each of us are doing better than we deserve. And that's what we're going to look at today. Wes asked me, as he said, to have a little discussion about the difference between mercy and grace. And they overlap a lot of times, and it's hard to, to keep them straight, but we're in a little bit of sorting. And as soon as he asked me, he said, okay. But let me expand that just a little bit and say the difference between justice, mercy, and grace. Really great teachers can take these complicated things and make them crystal clear. They could be, the term is perspicuous. Well, that's not going to happen today. We're going to talk about things, we'll have a better understanding, but it will not be clear, cut, concise crystal clear, but we'll have a better understanding. Sometimes these deep theological things really are quite simple. So do you understand about the term of righteousness? How are you righteous? It's very simple. To be righteous, you only have to do the right thing 100% of the time. No deviance, no exceptions, no wavering at all. Then you can be righteous. That's why none of us are. And that's why Paul tells us that no one is righteous, no, not one. That we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that we need help in that. Years ago I had a friend and he, he wanted to have a better understanding of the biblical term abide. He says, what does abide mean? And I say, stay. No, no, no. What does abide mean? I say, stay. The Greek word is meno. It means stay. And we want it to have, ooh, some warm, fuzzy connotation to it. You know, a deep, 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 just stay. And so we have that great understanding. Wes mentioned that we went to Bible college together. He forgot to mention that we were, we were there. Ah. There's three type of students at Bible college. The, the ones in the top of the class who want justice. Give me the grade I deserve. And they're the ones in the middle of the class who want mercy. And then there is me. And I was the part of the class that made the upper part of the class possible. And I was the part of the class that always needed grace. And that is what we're looking at today. The need that we have, not just of justice, 
but of mercy and grace. My opening text is Hebrews chapter 4, verses 8 through 16. As I read through here, there'll be one thing that'll be very obvious. The word justice is not in here. (laughs) So that's what our topic is, but it's not mentioned in our text. But Hebrews 4 says, For if Joshua had given them rest, he would not have spoken of another day after that. So there remains a Sabbath rest for those people of God. For the one who has entered his rest has himself also rested from his work as God did from his. Therefore, let us be diligent to enter that rest so that no one will fall through following the same example of disobedience, not being righteous. Verse 12, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. There is no creation, no creature, hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things as we are, yet was without sin. Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. My simple definition for justice is getting what you deserve. Getting what you deserve. You ever worry about standing before judges? I have. And we're going to get to a story about it here in a couple minutes. But one of the things I don't worry about standing before God's Judgment seat. Because there will be no surprises there. Everything I have ever done, everything I've ever thought, every intention, every move that I've ever had, he knows. Nothing is hidden from his sight. So when that accuser of the brethren comes up and says to God, do you know what Dave did? God says, indeed I do. And my son has covered that. And that's where we find ourselves as Christians. That we have a great high priest and that he is able to understand our situation and that he is able to sympathize with our weaknesses and that great word, therefore, let us draw near with confidence, boldness, almost brashness, you look at the Greek word there, it can be a b- just really open before the throne of grace. So that we may receive mercy and find grace in our time of need. So, <clears throat> justice is getting what you deserve. When I was 14, I had a little motorcycle, a Honda SL70. And... They had just paved the road in front of my house. We were now in town. But if I went down the alley two blocks to the south, I could be out of town. Or if I went a number of blocks to the north, past Rory's house, and then and down, down by the hospital, I can also be out of town, or at least where there weren't any streets, and I could ride my motorcycle all day. And then I had that diminishing, that well, the law of diminishing returns. That, you know, if I can ride my motorcycle, why should I ride my motorcycle? And so pretty soon, I am riding my motorcycle all over town. And so one day, there is this policeman who pulled up behind me, turned on his lights and sirens, and I did what any responsible 14-year-old would do. I went over the hill on 10th Street, down two blocks, 
through the swimming pool parking lot over on the south side of the swimming pool and into the sand hills. I rode through the cemetery later. I rode down those sand hills. I probably rode where Mike and Casey lived. But at the time, there was nothing there. And I rode my motorcycle until it was dark. I mean, D-A-R-K, dark. And then I pushed it home. And as I'm pushing it home, I'm making sure that there aren't any police vehicles parked anywhere close to my house. And so I come walking up, I open the front door, I push my motorcycle inside, because I can park it in my bedroom for a few. <laughs> and as I push my motorcycle inside, my dad is sitting on the couch, and at the other end of the couch is Tiny Fritzler, who was not tiny, but he was a police officer. <laughs> he was in the 300 Club. And he looked at me and he says, Dave, we need to talk. I don't remember the conversation. I do remember that my, <laughs> my, my tracking was better for the next few weeks because I had a rear end alignment. I don't know what all I deserve, but I got some punishment for that day. I thought I was getting away with stuff, and I thought things were... But I got some punishment, and that's what, some, what justice is. Getting what you deserve. Mercy. Mercy is not getting what you de deserve. And this is God's character. We see into that, uh, we have a glimpse into the character of God when we see mercy, and it is always there, and it has always been there. Psalm 103, 8 through 13. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness to those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. Our comp compassion, pity, mercy, all synonyms in the Bible. Loving kindness. There's this writer, his name is this in his play The Merchant of Venice and uh, so Julie if you could play our, our little video clip do I see Julie? I don't see Julie the quality of mercy is not strained it droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. Tis mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty, wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above this sceptered sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself. And earthly power doth then show likest gods when mercy seasons justice. Therefore, Jew, though justice be thy plea, consider this, that in the course of justice, none of us should see salvation. 
we do pray for mercy. And that same prayer doth teach us all to render the deeds of mercy. I have spoke thus much to mitigate the justice of thy plea, which if thou follow, this strict court of Venice must needs give sentence against the merchant there. Signor and... He was right. We pray for mercy. I don't ask for justice. And the great thing is that, mm, <laughs> that God is merciful. And we see that. I told Wes yesterday that uh, I'm breaking a lot of homiletic rules here today. I'm tell telling three personal stories. They're all kind of related, but most of all, I just like to tell these stories. So a few years after my initial incident with uh, the police officer, I was leaving church, and I'd given these two girls a ride home because I'm a nice fellow. And I have borrowed my friend Jim Crawford's car because he's a nice fellow. And so I'm driving down 2nd Street, and my friend, Tim Lee, who had moved to Casper, goes passing by in his 69 Chevelle. And I go, it'd be great to talk to Tim and Calvin, because Calvin Winland was riding alongside him. And so I pulled up next to him. And then they pulled ahead, and then I pulled up next to him, and then he pulled ahead, and he turned left. And I turned left. And pretty soon, we're down through the same neighborhood that I had ridden through earlier, only we're in these cars going down the streets and down the alleys until once again there was this police officer with his lights and sirens on, so we both pull over. I roll down Jim's window, <laughs> and I said, are you going to give me a ticket? And him, full of mercy and grace, he said, no. But him being full of justice says, no, you're under arrest. <laughs> Follow me to the police station. So I go down to the police station. They call everybody's parents who are involved. And so uh, these two girls, their parents came by. I tell you what, this one set of parents did not like me already, and this sealed the deal. <laughs> And I called my dad and explained the situation. I said, Dad, this is what happened. They said that they can, uh, as soon as a responsible adult comes by, I can be released and I can go home. And he said, rot. <laughs> In the meantime, because I have lots of time, Jim comes by, picks up his car, and Bill Winlin, who had, uh, Winlin, had been my boss, he owned Winlin Dairy, and I worked for him loading milk trucks and uh, pulling milk uh, displays in grocery stores for a little bit and everything else. And you know why I did? I, I walked off a job. I didn't quit. I didn't let him know I wasn't going to come. I just quit coming into work. What a Yahoo. I can't, irresponsible, I tell you what. It was just ridiculous. But that's what I did. I just quit showing up. So he came by to pick up Tim and Calvin, and he stuck his head into my cell, and he said, don't get a lawyer. You can use mine. talk about gracious. You talk about merciful. You talk about not being worried about justice. Well, you got what you deserve, you yahoo. So I spent the rest of the day there. Eventually, my brother came in from a ranch out north of town, and he came by to pick me up. He says, you don't want to go home. So I said, well, don't take me home then. <laughs> and a few days later, 
We're standing before the judge. Tom Lubnow. Tommy's dad. And I don't remember who the lawyer was, but I do know that I never got a bill. That bill handled everything. Mr. Winland, his lawyer, represented us well. Things were reduced. I had a big fine. It was a misdemeanor. It was all sorts of, you know, we were overzealous in doing this. I don't know whether that's accurate or not, but that's the way the court day went. And I was so happy about that, to be understanding about that. And I never, I never think about mercy and grace without having this type of reaction as we go through there. We'll put this next passage in context. Moses is getting the Ten Commandments. He's up all by himself, up on the mountain. He's, he's trying to find out what God is like. And God reveals himself to him. But I think the biggest revelation is not when God passes by him, but when he says in Exodus 34, verse 6, Then the Lord passed in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness by, for thousands and who forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin, yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished, visiting the iniquity of the fathers and the children and the grandchildren to the third and fourth generation. Moses made haste to bow low toward the earth and worship. And he said, if now I have found favor. It's one of our synonyms for grace. If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray let the Lord go along in our midst, even though the people are so obstinate and pardon our iniquity and our sin and take us as your own possession. This is what kept Jonah from going to, to Nineveh. That he, he knew that God was compassionate and would forgive those yahoos. So he didn't want to go. But it's also what I count on. I will never stand before God's throne and say, give me what I deserve. Because what I deserve is eternal punishment. I stand before for his judgment, and I say, thank you that you gave what I deserved for someone else. Back, Dr. Jack Cottrell says there's the, we have the way of grace and the way of the law. And the way of the law is quite simple. You keep the law and you gain the benefits. You break the law you receive the punishment. But the way of grace stands out on its head. Christ kept the law and he received the punishment. But I have broken the law repeatedly, willfully, deliberately, obstinately. And I ran across that word obstinate in in Exodus, I go, yeah, those, oh, those Israelites, how could they be so obstinate? And then I realize, oh, they're, they're just representative of me. So I break all of this, and what do I get? The blessing. I am so glad that I have understanding and not just mercy, but also grace. Grace is getting even what you don't deserve. The blessings that we have. My third story is about speeding tickets. I'm going to tell you about two speeding tickets. That can make it four stories, but I'm counting it as just the third one. November 9th, 
1981, I received a speeding ticket. I remember it very well. It's the Sunday before Mike was born. I was driving to Scott's Bluff, trying to get there so I could open the gas station on time. We had been in, <coughs> in uh, Torrington for a, a wedding, and Joyce was just spa- spending the day there. So I was driving back to work, and Doug Miller, state patrolman, my friend Doug Miller, who had just replaced his headlights a week before, he pulled me over and started laughing. And I thought, well, Doug's going to come up here and give me a warning. Doug laughed the whole time he wrote my stinking ticket. And I had that ticket in my mind when Mike was born and as Mike was being raised and as Mike became an adult. And for over 40 years, I had not gotten a speeding ticket. And then a couple years ago, I preached in a little Baptist church in Shoshone. We left Shoshone. We had just grabbed some food stuff at the the, uh, uh, come-and-go type situation they have in Shoshone. And so we head east out of town. I set my cruise for 72. I I tried to set it at 70, but it was a little bit above. I just didn't mess with it. It was okay. So we're driving down the road at 72, and I'm quite comfortable with it. But you know what I forgot? Powder River. Powder River, <laughs> they expect you to drive 45 through Powder River. And I come driving in, Joyce and Connie are both asleep. They're just, <laughs> and I come driving through there, and I look over to the left side of the road, and there is a high patr- patrolman. And I go, oh, I'm going to get a speeding ticket. And sure enough, he whipped out. We pulled over when it was safe. He came walking up. He says, uh, y- do you know why I'm here? And uh, I said, well, I, I think so. He says, yeah, it's pretty obvious about what, why I needed to, to pull you over. And so we were, <laughs> we were talking about that. And I said, I explained my situation. I had just preached this sermon. And it was a wonderful thing, and I, I had set the cruise, and I was I was alert and everything else. I had just forgotten about the changing the speed limit. That's that's all. And he goes, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And finally, I looked up at him and I said, "So, have you ever been a sermon illustration on grace?" <laughs> and he walked back to his patrol car, and he filled out the ticket. And he came up and he said, I did some thinking on that grace. And I gave you a lot of it. I wrote that you were going 10 miles over the speed limit. I was so happy to get that speeding ticket. But between gas money, food money, speeding ticket money, the check that I picked up in Shoshone, I don't think it covered it. (laughs) Grace is getting what you don't even deserve. I didn't deserve him to knock that off. Everything else, what I I deserved a big, you know, that would have been an expensive speeding ticket. But instead, I got amazing grace. John Newton had a great understanding about that amazing grace. When he says, saved a wretch, he meant it. He knew what he had been, what he was. He knew what it was to fear, but he also knew what it was to have that fear relieved because of grace. We need to still be amazed by grace. The synonyms for mercy we talked briefly about 
synonym for grace, I brought it up when I said favor, because it is. Old Testament, quite often what we, what we, when we read favor, it's the same word that is translated for, for grace. The, the Hebrew word kin means delightful. In the New Testament, the word that's translated to grace, karas, the gift that makes glad. Jack Cottrell defines grace as simply that. The gift that makes glad. And we see that as a gift of God. Something that totally undeserved, unmerited. But we get it anyway. Joyce likes to tell the story of justice, mercy, and grace with the kids cleaning their bedroom. Get these bedrooms cleaned by this particular time or else. And then, yeah, room might not be clean, everything else. That's all right, kids. We're going for ice cream anyway. And she would remind them, remember, this ice cream is grace. Or it could be Joyce's addiction. But <laughs> so I don't want what I deserve. I'm thankful that I don't get what I deserve. And I am eternally delighted. glad that I get that gift that I don't even deserve. Uh, from the standpoint of terminology and Bible usage, the concept is grace is a gift that brings joy, can legitimately be used in this qualified, inclusive sense. As Dr. Donald Nash says, grace then stands for all God has done for us. All that he has done for us, his children, including Creation, revelation, incarnation, crucifixion, resurrection, justification, sanctification. And he, he goes on, uh, well, Cottrell goes on and says grace has three basic connotations. Number one is the source of salvation, an attribute of God's nature that desires our salvation and impels him to accomplish it through the incarnate Christ. And secondly, the content of our salvation, the actual gift we receive from God, that double cure, both justification and sanctification. And finally, the way that God saves us, that method that he uses. Bill Gothard says, grace is the desire and power to do God's will. Paul puts it this way, Ephesians 2, but God being rich in mercy because of his great love which, with which he has loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, that's justice, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that, that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of work, so that anyone, so that anyone, May boast. So, <clears throat> quick recap. Let's say I borrow someone's car. And as I'm driving it around, I back into a bollard. Little post sticking up there. I put a crease on the car. And I'm returning it to my friend. 
And as I bring it back to him and say, Jim, I backed into something with the car. Here is the, <laughs> the money for the repair. If I give him the money and he takes the money and gets the car repaired, that's just. But I've come back and I say, here's the money for the repair. And he says, ah, don't worry about it. That's mercy. But when I come back with the car and I offer him the money and he says, what? What are you talking about? Are you kidding? Keep the car. That's grace. Where do you want to where do you want to sit? Do you want to, or where do you want to stand? Do you want to stand before God and plead for justice? Or do you want to stand before God and thank him for mercy and grace? We started with a text that did not have justice in it, just mercy and grace. We're going to end with a text that does not have grace in it until you think about it. One of those great simple texts that preaches itself, Micah 6 8. I remember turning in the, my uh, sermon outline for Mr. Beeman. And of course, he just, before he even looked at it or anything, he just told me what my three points would be and everything else as we went through there because it's obvious. Boy, make you feel, feel inept at times when you, you know. You think you have figured something out and have something to present and it's already clear to him. But it should be clear to each of us. So as we prepare our hearts for communion, I will take you to the Old Testament. Micah 6 eight. He has shown thee, O man, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Please go with me to that throne room of God. Father God, I am so thankful that we once again can approach boldly your throne of grace. I thank you that we do have that great high priest that makes intercession for us, who is able to sympathize with us, who knows all about us and understands us completely, and that we can approach seeking mercy and grace in our time of need and that we can find it there. So, Father, be with us today as we gather around this table. We thank you for mercy and grace and for your justice and the fact that it was laid upon your son, our punishment. He bore it, and I thank you for that. This is my prayer in the name of him who took all my sin. Amen.
thank you, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to meet around your table. Thank you for letting us be able to fellowship and focus on you. And thank you for helping us to see uh, what justice is and what mercy is and what grace is all about. Thank you for the words that came from your word. Thank you for the heart that was used to deliver it. And Lord, I thank you and praise you for everything you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, a couple of announcements. As you can guess, there will be no uh, home church tonight um, unless you want to ski over to Mike and, and, and Phyllis's. I'm sure that they would. Mike will fix you a meal. He doesn't know it yet, but he will <laughs> fix you a meal. Um, so if you want to ski over there, that's fine. Uh, but uh, also, uh, um, Wednesday, um, there is a uh, uh, memorial service for Esther. Um, and that will be here at the church on Wednesday. And I apologize, I don't remember the time, but uh, we'll have that. I'd also ask that you would continue every day to be praying for Hugoton, um, for the situation, for the people that are involved, that, uh, that um, God can have some glory. Um, I uh, heard a neat, uh, I want you to think about this. I heard uh, or saw a neat little meme that I thought was really, really pretty profound when you think about it and it was that Paul entered the gates of eternity to the applause and cheers of those he had martyred think about that isn't that profound that is just wild wild so let's stand and we're going to sing a song that I don't know if I can play it or not but we'll have fun trying it okay I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me About the angels mean And the old redemption story Then sums of you The song of victory Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Have a good week and stay warm.